We've heard tonight from New York Mayor Bill de Blasio and Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar. Now, uh, another candidate who, like several debaters tonight, demonstrated uh, his Spanish fluency. Take a look. La, situa la situación ahora es inaceptable. Este presidente ha atacado, ha demonizado los inmigrantes. Es inaceptable y voy a cambiar este. On day one, I will make sure that, number one, we end the ICE policies and the customs and border policies that are violating the human rights. Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey joins us now. Senator Booker, uh, thanks for being with us. How do you think it went tonight for you? I'm really excited. I think it went really well and got us to have an opportunity to have a first conversation about a lot of major issues. And for me, and right now, we have a lot of folks who are just discovering me. Our name recognition is now just rising. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it went, and we're going to continue the conversation hard on the campaign trail. You obviously tried to make some significant contrast in terms of not just policy, but, but sort of energy and life experience as well. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I've dedicated my entire life uh, to fighting for communities that are too often left out and left behind. I'm the only person, not only in this race, but also in the United States Senate, that lives in a low-income black and brown community. And I've lived there for about 20 years, dedicating my life to the issues of folks in this country where the economy is not working for them, from housing policies to environmental injustice. And so I've taken on the toughest problems and shown through my leadership that we can make ma major changes, in fact, turn things around uh, if we bring people together to solve them. And that's the way uh, that I'm going to fight this election to beat Donald Trump, and that's the way I'm going to govern. It's the way I always have. You, you were the only one in the group who didn't raise your hand when asked who would sign back onto the 2015 Iran deal. You said you'd want to renegotiate and leverage a better deal. That puts you, I mean, I guess, closer to President Trump in, a, in some sense than your fellow Democrats. No. No, no. First of all, let's be clear. He was wrong to pull out of the deal. It was an imperfect deal. But to pull out of a deal where we stand with our allies and have transparency into the Iran uh, nuclear enrichment program, it pushed it back 10, 20, 25 years. Because he did that now, we stand alone. We're isolated against our allies. And Iran is pushing towards a nuclear weapon. So we need to find a way to, to, to use diplomacy to solve this problem, not the war beat that he's doing. But I'm not going to stand up in a primary stage and announce that I'm going to unilaterally or, or, or uh, de facto go right back into that deal. I'm going to do everything I can to try to get everything off the negotiating table that I can. Uh, again, we need to go into a situation like that with all options on the table uh, and a strong negotiating position. What will Iran think if somebody who already said they're going to go back into the deal becomes president of the United States? They're going to say, well, you said you'll do it. Get back in that deal. No, we've got to be thoughtful about this. And I really think uh, that the next president should go back to diplomacy but should not and stop this drumbeat towards war, but do it with every piece of leverage they can to get the most off the table as possible. You also talked about the criminal justice reform bill, something you've been working on, obviously, for a long time. It's interesting because the president mentioned that bill in a tweet earlier today. It's something he seems he's going to try to run on in 2020 as well, despite his history in, in New York with the Central Park Five. Well, look, he has a pretty sad history, not only of overtly ex overt expressions of racism and bigotry, uh, but that bill that he's going to be bragging about has large components of bills that I wrote, everything from uh, ending solitary confinement for juveniles on a federal level uh, to even lowering mandatory minimum, something I was fighting for long before he became president of the United States. But again, I admit, I worked across the aisle. We got this done. That's something I see as a point of pride, but I also see it as just a beginning because we still have a profoundly unjust criminal justice system, and he should know. Because as Brian Stevenson says, we have a criminal justice system that treats you better if you're rich and guilty than if you're poor and innocent. And uh, men like him have been abusing this system and abusing the rights of the, the, not only African Americans, but frankly, the over-incarceration of women, of people who are mentally ill, the over-incarceration of the poor. Uh, and so I'm going to fight to take this a lot further. I'm happy that I was able to show that I can get progress in a divided Senate. Uh, but I'm going to show as president that I can end mass incarceration once and for all and do important things like bring police accountability uh, 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 in our country so we do not have uh, that kind of implicit racial bias that's so hurting our criminal justice system. Senator Booker, I just want to ask, and on a, a slightly lighter note, and I'm asking this to someone who's occasionally been caught rolling his eyes on camera, uh, there's a photo of you looking at Beto O'Rourke as he is starting to speak in Spanish. You're giving him kind of amazing side eye, and I, I wonder if you've seen the photo, what was going through your mind in that moment, if you can remember? 
Uh, I can't really remember. Uh, <laughs> I just knew he had laid a gauntlet down, and that, and and I was talking a little bit with Castro. Both he and I knew, as people who can speak Spanish, that now we were going to bring it as well. Um, but I can't remember exactly what I was thinking in that moment. I just was. I right. uh, uh, saw him pull it out, and I I realized that there's a lot of bilingual people, some even <laughs> trilingual, in this race, and uh, it, I'm happy to have those skills. Yeah, uh, Senator Boker, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, back with our team now for uh, for more perspective. I think he handled that well. Do the, the language skills tomorrow night will be there all night. Yeah. He's got like seven Mandarin languages. From Jill yeah. I've never heard Kristen Jill. It Jill sounds Brand like speak Booker Mandarin. was kind of mad that that uh, O'Rourke got there first, and as he said, he pulled it out first. I was going to do that. <laughs> you did that, and I'm I'm not happy about it. You know. So. But but just in terms of the campaign that Cory Booker has run thus far, I mean, I think there are a lot of people who. The, you know, supporters of, of Cory Booker early on, and certainly, as you said, as mayor in Newark, who have been disappointed at the kind of the arc of his campaign thus yeah. far. Uh, underwhelming so far. Um, and surprisingly so, because, listen, I've known Cory Booker for 25 years. Uh, when Cory, uh, I graduated from Yale Law School in 93, he showed up in 93 in that fall and took over the law school. There was a team Booker for president uh, uh, camp and the law school 25 years ago. So, really? I mean, I mean, people were like, totally so. Uh, it's like Bill Clinton. Like, you know, really, really, that's the history. You have, you have before Bill Clinton, after Bill Clinton, before Cory Booker, after Cory Booker. So, I think people expected him to come out like a rocket, and he hasn't yet. Um, I am happy though uh, that you now have both political parties uh, uh, fighting for the mantle of criminal justice reform. Who would have thought that even five years ago? You have both parties or mass incarceration parties for a, very, for a long time. Democrats and Republicans got us into this ditch. To have Donald Trump and Cory Booker and Biden arguing about who is going to do the most to de-incarcerate America, I think that's a very, very powerful and a positive development in our country. Can I, I, I agree with you. Can I, can I just speak to the politics of this? I, first of all, I think Booker is a very talented guy. Just I had him on the Axe Files recently. He was very impressive. We did it in New York City Hall, to your, to your point. He yeah, has a great story to, uh, to tell there. We should go back to the fact that this is a process, that it starts in Iowa, runs through New Hampshire. I was surprised because he has been organizing very well and getting good crowds in Iowa when this Iowa poll came out recently, and he was at 1 or 2%. Yeah. And he has to make yeah. progress there. If he finishes 5th, 6th, 7th in Iowa, he can't activate support in places like uh, Nevada, South Carolina, and beyond. Yeah. Uh, and so... Um, one, one positive moment for him, though, is that if you look at the Google searches in South Carolina and throughout the South, his Google searches went through the roof. Yeah. So well, there he are... needs 45,000 yeah. new donors yeah. just to clear yeah. the next hurdle, yeah. so that had better yeah. happen yeah. for him. Or, <laughs> yeah. And I want to see I, him on the next stage. I, I'm, I'm just saying the challenge yeah. for him, he, he, you know, he, he got elected, he, he toppled the incumbent mayor of Newark by going door to door. He wants to replicate that in Iowa, uh, and he has to finish in that top tier of candidates in, in order to realize his potential this race. And that. by the way, he is running for re-election in New Jersey, so he's hedging his bet. <laughs> yeah. They changed the law so he could do yes, so. Yeah. Uh, I'll just mention in that same Iowa poll, David, one of the positive things for Booker in that poll is he had a lot of upside. He was in that group that when we asked Iowa caucus second goers, choices. who first choice, right. second choice, and actively considering, he was up there in yeah. that group that had Iowa Democrats thinking about him. Yeah. And they're like, he's he on the grow. menu for them. They say, well, and, well, it is a and he held himself yeah. tonight with he that. Helped, he, helped, he held himself tonight. He could grow. Here's one thing. If Elizabeth Warren winds up as the nominee, he is probably the most likely person to be the vice president because she's going to need to balance that ticket racially from a gender point of view and ideologically. So he's got two tickets to this dance. Uh, and I think we ought to keep that in mind. I, I wouldn't write Cory Booker off too soon, but he's got to do something. There's got to be... He's still... He's, He's got to find a gear where he begins to make some progress or he's in deep trouble. Well, don't you think he was trying to do that when he was uh, attacking Joe Biden yeah. on the <laughs> yeah. on the segregation? But uh, how desperate question. is that when, like, the best well, thing you can say is, like, don't say nice things to segregationists. This is my rationale to be president. So I, I thought that, that was, I totally was sad with you. from Corey. I I totally agree with you, but I think that was part of his push yeah. to kind of say, okay, look at me, look at me. Bye. Yeah, and to try to gain some traction among African-American voters, yeah. because that's what we've seen uh, with Biden. He's doing very well among African-American voters. Uh, the two African-American candidates in this race, Kamala Harris and, and Cory Booker, mm -hmm. haven't gotten much traction at all. And, and I think it's one of the reasons why you saw Cory Booker tonight talk about Newark, talk about being African-American, yeah. uh, and talk about his, his history uh, in that city.